Hello, this is Eric from labofcoding.com. In the last video, we looked at how to create a new Django application in a project and how to register it. In this video, we'll pick up from that and introduce Django models. But before we go to that, there are two things that I like to quickly mention. Uh, first of all, I've opened uh, the project here in Atom and uh, I've also opened the settings.py file. In the last video, we registered our application by adding its name in the list of installed apps. So we just gave the name of the application and Django was able to register the app, the app for us. There is another way that we can register application uh, applications in Django and that is by giving the dotted path to a, to a class which declares the configuration of a given Django application. If you if you open the main app, there is an apps.py module and within that module there is a main config class which inherits from app config. So instead of just giving the name of the application in the installed app setting, we can give the path to this the dotted path to this class and Django will be able to register our application for us. So we can give the dotted path beginning with the application name. So that will be main dot apps dot pi dot main config. So that is main dot apps dot dot apps dot main conf config. Yeah. So that's another way of uh, registering uh, Django applications. So the second, the second thing that I like to mention is that when you make any changes to your code base, to your project, Django will automatically restart the development server for you. So when you make any changes, there is no need for you to automatically uh, restart the server yourself. Django will do that for you. So let's open our development server and see if our project is still running properly on localhost port 8000. So let's open terminal here. And uh, let's start the development server by Python manage.py run server. Awesome. Our project is still running properly, and we can open that in Firefox and see if everything is still running properly. Awesome. Our project is still running properly. When you make a uh, any breaking changes, Django will try to restore uh, to restart the development server. And uh, when it does that, and notes that there is a there is something that is broken in your code base, the development server will complain and it won't restart. For example, let's give uh, a wrong path here. Let's just add some random string and save that one. If we go to the terminal, we see that Django has complained module not found. No module named main FFF, which is expected. So we can uh, go back to main and save that one. And we see that Django has again restarted the development server and everything is back to normal. Yeah. So now let's go to Django models. <coughs> Django uses the models API to uh, allow you to interact with the underlying relational database. Django out of the box works with several relational databases, uh, SQLite, PostgreSQL, MySQL, and Oracle. In this tutorial, we will work with a simple file-based SQLite database. By default, when you create a new Django project, Django usually configures uh, the database in a dictionary known as databases in settings.py. There is a default uh, set, a default key within the databases, which specifies the default database that Django will be using for your project. By default, Django usually configures the database to SQLite three, and that is what we will use t uh, in this uh, tutorial. Yeah. So, <coughs> um, usually, to create a new uh, table in your underlying database usually create a class in models.py which inherits from a class in uh, a class in models that is models.model so 
we will create a class here and uh, the Django ORM that is object relational mapper will take care of the rest uh, we will see how we will create um, the underlying database table from the class declaration that we will make here um, this tutorial is a tutorial on to do's so uh, we will be creating uh, to do's and we will be storing them in a database table I have created a simple diagram which shows how the class, the table will look like and the various columns that it will have. So the table will be called to do's, it will have an ID which will be the primary key, it will have a title, a description, a due date, a due, a sort of due date and um, done which is a boolean field which just uh, says uh, if the to do has been completed or not. Yeah, so uh, the Django models API allows us to declare this as a class in models.py and then we after declaring the class we run migrations that is we just persist uh, the changes declares declared in that class to the underlying database. Yeah, so let's uh, open the Django documentation here. search for models rather let's search for model fields yeah model field reference so uh, the class that you declare in models.py usually inherits from models.model so let's create our class that is to do that it inherit from models that model let us save that one for now if we go back to uh, the Django documentation uh, we will see that on the side there is a um, field types uh, so these uh, field types are the uh, mappings to the underlying columns that uh, the underlying database table will have. So, um, for example, if you go to our uh, simple diagram here, the title, which is a simple string field, will be a char field, and uh, the boolean will be a boolean field and the due date will be a date field and so forth so um, let's uh, go to our models.py file and declare these uh, fields so um, the class usually maps to the underlying table and the fields maps to the columns for that table so our to do will have a title and that will inherit for model, uh, sorry, that will be a models to char, to char field. The char field class uh, has a required argument, that is a mandatory argument, uh, known as max length, which is self-explanatory, uh, which specifies the number of, uh, char maximum number of characters that it will store. So let's just give an arbitrary value of um, 255. And, um, it also has uh, let's go back it has a, tit a title a description due date and done so <coughs> the so the due date is a date field so that will be due date it will be a models dot date field it has no required argument and the boolean field, uh, sorry, the uh, done, which is a boolean field, will be models dot boolean field. Uh, you can specify a default value. Uh, so when you don't give a value, Django will use that as the default. So by default, when someone creates a new to do, we will set the done field to false. So we just say default is equal to false 
and um, we have a description field which will be described uh, just storing some description for the task uh, this one will be a models dot text field mm. so those are our fields uh, you can see there is an id field which is the primary key which i have not declared here i have not done that because django by default uh, when you run the migration unless you tell it otherwise it will create a primary key known as id on your table so there is no need for us to do uh, to do that so we have uh, declared our class here so after you uh, create your new model the next thing to do is to create a migration uh, by migration by creating a migration django just generates the code that the orm will use to persist the table uh, the table in the database so let's go to the terminal here and in another tab so we do we create the new migration by a command known as make migration so that will be python manage.py and the command is make migrations and if everything is all right django will uh, generate the migration file for us awesome the migration is has been created so the migration is usually created where uh, in the app for that uh, where that model is located or where you have made changes for that matter so if we go to uh, migrations you'll see that there is a, a migrations uh, file created so don't worry about this for now so this is just the code that the Django RM will use to persist the um, table in your to create the table in your database so we we do that by uh, migrating by migrating is just uh, persisting whatever changes which are declared in that migration to the underlying database so I do that by a command known as uh, migrate so that will be python manage.py migrate awesome so we have uh, run our migration and Django has uh, created that table for us in the underlying database so um, so Django has created for us the table in the SQLite database so we can drop into SQLite and see if Django has indeed created for us that table Django usually ships with a command with a manage.py command which you can use to start the database client or shell for whatever database that you're using so let's use that command to start the SQLite client and see if Django has created for us um, the table. So we do that by Python manage manage.py. The name of the command is uh, db shell. Yeah, so it has opened the SQLite uh, client for us and we can run some SQL here or some SQLite specific commands. So Let's use the dot tables macro to inspect the tables that we have in our SQLite database for now. Uh, you can see there is uh, quite a number of tables. Um, there are some auth, uh, tab some which begin with auth. Uh, these uh, come from the auth app. Uh, if you go to settings.py, there is uh, an auth app, django.contrib.auth, which Django uses to um, for authentication so this um, out specific table came from that uh, application uh, for our main app we have Django has generated for us the main underscore to do table uh, if you look at um, the name you see that it begins with underscore main by default Django usually creates the table using the name of the application underscore and then the name of the model so excuse uh, <coughs> that's why we have our, our table as main underscore to do mm. we can uh, use the dot schema macro to uh, inspect the SQL like the SQL for this table yeah, so this is just the SQL that SQLite used to create our main to do and you can see it has an ID 
uh, column uh, which is the primary key a title column a due date column which is a date a done which is a boolean a description um, which is um, a date uh, text field sorry the description was not supposed to be a um, uh, a time field it was supposed to be a text field rather so we will um, correct that one in the next video but uh, that's it for now so um, I know this video has been quite long if maybe something is not clear I'll try to uh, look uh, at the video again and see if maybe things will be clearer so in the next video looked at uh, at how to use the Django ORM to insert uh, data into our to do's table and to query that data to update it and even to delete it um, using the Django ORM. As you can see, we have created the table without writing any line of uh, SQL. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching.